Kerma Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight, and uh, I've got a bunch of requests to do a Kerma cam on an airplane that got a bunch of cool airplanes sitting over there uh, that people haven't seen, I haven't seen the inside of in a long time. Uh, we're actually, the, all those airplanes are actually out because we're doing a, uh, we got to do a fire suppression test thing draining out all the sprinkler system and stuff. Anyway, so I am going to come over here and look in an airplane at the museum that I have not been in in a very, very long time. We used to let people kind of take a peek in it occasionally, but uh, it's been a long time since that happened. That was when uh, Fantasy Flight was open uh, over in the other place over there, which is only ever intended to be my shop, and it's now uh, becoming to become that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go in the Fantasy of Flight little uh, museum light that we're running for now, basically to keep my gift shop open, home of the world's greatest aircraft collection. Maybe not yet, but that's what we're striving to be. And uh, anyway, so this is our little gift shop right here for people that have never been to the Museum of Light. So a lot of the kiosk stuff and all that has come from the other side. Yeah, so anyway, so one of the reasons why we uh, keep the little Museum Light over here is not only to maintain the trademark status on clothing and things like that, theme park services, but also um, I want to kind of keep my sign out on the interstate out there. I've got a nice uh, interstate sign that we don't do events anymore. This is the museum light. Speaking of light, I'll let there be light. And uh, I can't show you around. That's one of our uh, key uh, things to inspire kids. You know, cost 50 cents. Uh, we actually do tours over here uh, a couple times a day. It's pretty cool. We're only open 11 to 3, four days a week. I'm not going to show you a lot because you got to come over and see it for yourself. But the uh, one airplane that we have come to see here is this airplane right here. This is the B-24. Like I said, I have not been in this thing in forever. And I don't even know if I can get in or whether or not. That's our little tagline there, rebuilding and reliving the passion of the past. A couple of my characters there, a super solution. Um, this airplane was uh, owned by David Talashe. He actually brought this uh, out of India. Originally, it was flown by the, uh, uh, the British Air Force over in the CBI theater out of India, you know, the China, Burma, India hump. And uh, at the end of the war, they left a number of them there. They were supposed to scrap them. And the Indian Air Force just kept flying them. And I think back when they were like having a war with Pakistan or something like that, they were actually flying these during the war. I don't know what year that was. It was obviously after World War II. But it had to have been probably in the 50s because I think the, uh, the Pakistanis were actually flying like F-86 Sabre jets. So anyway, that's got a bit of a time warp thing going on there. Um, uh, the airplane uh, was painted up uh, Joe. Uh, Talashe had it. I think he did it for a movie. Dave Talashe was the guy that owned specialty restaurants, you know, 94th Air Squadron, those kind of restaurants. They used to be around the airports and stuff. Uh, and you could like listen while you were eating to the, uh, the air traffic control and the tower and the ground and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is a B-24J and uh, it uses uh, 1830 engines, kind of like a DC-3 short Sunderland. Um, it's, it's always been said that the B-24, you know, they used to have a bit of a rivalry between the B-24 and the B-17 guys during the war. And the B-17 guys used to say, this was the box the B-17 came in. <laughs> so, somebody put wings on it and they flew it. So there's a couple of ways to get in, as I remember. I hope there's no big spiders in there. We've actually got a... Uh, a piece of plexiglass we've loaned out to uh, the guys working on the Collings Foundation airplane. We took that out. They're going to make some new glass and uh, probably make us one as well. One of the ways you can actually get in 
is up through the nose gear. Well, I believe, but I'm not going to try that. You can actually get in right here, believe it or not, okay? So there's the nose gear, and you can actually get up in, up that way. I sure wouldn't want to do it when somebody was towing this thing, but we'll get up in there in the cockpit and climb up in the front there. There's obviously the pedo tube. Uh, uh, Dave Talashay was running the restaurants, and at the time, um, it would have been in the early 90s, maybe 93, 94, somewhere around in there. Uh, the, the restaurants, uh, especially the restaurants, were having some financial problems, and some of the airplanes were actually Dave's. Dave was a B-17 pilot during the war, and uh, he had a passion, started collecting stuff out of the South Pacific uh, when nobody really cared, you know, so Dave had a passion, he was one of the early guys, and uh, had a number of airplanes, and uh, started getting into financial problems, and the, uh, the board of directors said, Dave, we've got to sell some airplanes, and reluctantly, uh, he sold me the B-24 and the B-26. Um, B-24 I picked up at uh, Palwaukee Airport uh, up in by Chicago. Uh, never been in one in my life. I had somebody, by that time I had an unlimited piston engine uh, waiver from the FAA. Uh, my last one that gave me that was my Schwartz Sunderland. Uh, read the manual, uh, got in it with somebody that was a B-24 co-pilot with the Collings Foundation. And the uh, first time I ever flew one was out of Palwaukee, and we ended up in uh, Kankakee, headed home, had some engine problems, left it, pulled all the accessories off, uh, you know, governors, mags, carburetors, everything. Uh, no disrespect to Dave, but he was not well known for doing a lot of maintenance. Uh, turbochargers on the bottom here. Uh, gear wells, um, turbo on the other deal there. We just kind of got it up on the jacks and stuff over here as a safety precaution, you know, in case the, the tires leak or something like that. Um, 1,200 horsepower engines. I'm going to do a little bit of a walk around. Kind of unique bomb doors, you know, they don't open like a B-17, most bombers, where they just flap open like this. They actually roll down on the sides there. And uh, let's see, this airplane has never been restored. It has been iran which means uh, uh, inspect and repair as necessary. Uh, you can see that when you open the little hatch there where the waste guns pop out, that little thing pops out, gives a little bit of a wind screen for the deal. Uh, the, uh, all the control surfaces are fabric, rudder, elevator, and the ailerons. Uh, everything else is pretty much metal. Of course, it's got a twin tail. You can look at the rear turret back here. I believe these are Emerson turrets. Uh, they're different ones on the front and the back, but basically a 50 caliber machine guns. And I got to tell you, <laughs> When Dave bought this from the Indian Air Force back in about 1971, or it was the early 70s, I was like graduating from high school, he flew this all the way back from India via, you know, uh, uh, you know going through uh, Europe and stuff and then coming over the pond, I guess, uh, the northern route, and then uh, taking it to California. All the 50 caliber machine guns were still in the airplane. Oh man, there's no way in hell you could ever get away with that today. Anyway, so that's that. Um, waste gun on this side. Uh, this airplane, uh, this airplane did not have one, but uh, the B-24 had a retractable ball turret. It came out of the bottom here, okay? And uh, it actually, I, I think I've got the, the deal for it, and I've got a turret for it, but it basically went up and down. This one was actually set up for like a radar deal and uh, didn't ever uh, have the turret, at least when, uh, when I got the airplane. You can see the bomb doors here are closed on this side. They actually run up that little track right there. Uh, if there's anything interesting out here. Um, anyway. We'll get a chance to go back in the back at some point. 
uh, we kind of leave this open for people to take a peek up inside. Of course, it's an experimental airplane. And like I said, this thing has never been restored. I don't think those oxygen bottles and all that stuff have been taken out since the war. All this oxygen stuff here, you know, this is the original zinc chromate. At some point it was painted with another color. Still got a lot of the original wood stuff. And, and you know, I mean, there's been a lot of stuff that's been taken out that's, uh, you know, probably the old radios have been upgraded and things like that. We'll get a chance to see if we can crawl back in there and get in the turret and stuff. But uh, basically, let's go see how we can figure out how to get in this thing. The easiest thing to get in is through the bomb doors. Of course, here you can see the bomb doors are up on this side. And occasionally we let people take a peek in here. So here's the bomb doors, uh, bomb bay. There's the center section right there, okay. It looks like a fuel pump, a couple of fuel pumps. So it had fuel tanks and both things. It would be a hydraulic tank right there. So I got plenty of fluid in it. Uh, this is probably a, like a, a hand crank for probably the, yeah, the bomb base. See, I'm starting to move the bomb doors on the other side there. So that's a hand crank for that. I have not been in this thing in forever. So forgive me if I don't know everything. You can see how that works there. It's got like little round things right there. So this big old like uh, sprocket runs off that little chain there and just rolls that thing up and down. I'm sure it's, it also uh, has a, you know, what do you call it? Uh, hydraulic or electric motor that runs it. Another fuel pump out there. Pulleys for probably aileron elevator systems. There's a, a door or a floor right there. I'm sorry, a little corrugated part there. And if you see, you see a little chair up there. That'd be like for the radio guy back up there. And the normal bomb shackles. I can't remember what they call these B7s or something. I, it's been so long since I've. Anyway, the, the the little clip. There's a clip right there. So they clip on right there. And then what happens is when you clip the bomb release, this thing goes click like that. You know, it's you, you cock the bomb release. And if you want to release it, if I take it off. Let's see if I can do this. Anyway, that would have released it right there if I would have done that. Anyway, whatever. You get the picture. We had the uh, interesting in the B25. I'll have to do a Kermit cam on this one day. We had this set up in the B25, and they actually work in the B25. And uh, we had we had done basketball nets, and we tape off or not tape off. We get a tie wrap on one end and we hang it to the deal and then we clip the other end of the bomb rack. And uh, I used to drop watermelons out at the Fort Lauderdale Air and Sea Show, so that was kind of fun. Okay, so that's kind of the closed bomb. See, all these original freaking things are in here. Like I said, this thing is a freaking awesome airplane to potentially restore because so much of the stuff has not been touched. You know, lights in here for here, all this open wiring, some kind of a solenoid for something. I mean, like I said, it has been so long since I've been in this thing, but this airplane would make an awesome freaking restoration. All the things here for each of the, you know, the, the, the bomb deals or whatever. And of course, this is the walkway that you uh, get up to the cockpits up there. You get up to the nose and the turret up in the front there. And uh, anyway, it's interesting. So let me see how I can get up in here without busting my butt and still holding the camera. Okay, so this goes up to the radio room. Okay. Up over here. I'm not sure what have, would have gone in there. I think bottles of Naked in Jamaica rum. Naked in Jamaica. And that would fit absolutely perfectly. Something like there. It says flares, something about flares. Okay, so here's the radio operator room. I This would not have been a navigator because there's no sextant class. Oh my god. Oh God. Okay, so let me sit in this little chair here. Do I look like a navigator or what? 
not a navigator, a radio operator, folds up here. Okay, play solitaire with yourself. If you get bored, uh, oxygen, these are all the oxygen tanks. It doesn't appear you could actually get up over the wing to the front, but maybe. No, I think maybe you could. That would be a pretty tight squeeze. Although I have lost a little weight lately. Um, walk around oxygen bottle. See, like all these freaking original, these canvas things. This is all freaking original World War II stuff, I'm pretty sure. All sorts of tubes up there for, you know, uh, you know, hydraulic lines and different things like that. Um, what do we got here? We've got uh, antenna reel, mic adapters, VHF, which should be the very high frequency radios, liaison receiver, call something, something pilot or table light or something like that. Anyway, we will restore this back to awesome shape. Look at all this stuff. It's still in there. Look at that. Flip the switch, you know. I think it turns on the disco lights in the back. When they have a party, wouldn't it make it in Jamaica run? This would be your intercom system if you wanted to talk to somebody, you know. Pretty sure that's what that is. Okay, look at this. <laughs> in case you want to, you know, change or something like that and you're shy, you can drop the curtains. This actually goes to the outside. That would be an escape panel for this guy, because obviously if they ditched, that would be a nice way to get out. Okay, there's the wing. There's the tail. ADF loop. Uh, that's a World War II thing right there. That's wood with a an antenna with a, what do you call it, like a metal sheath over the top of it. This thing probably didn't have a lot of fancy radars. You can see where that little thing pops out for the gunner right there. Okay. Little wing over there. More antennas. Whew. Wouldn't want to be on his bad side if I was standing out here. That's the upper turret with 250s there. Okay, let's go back inside. Here we go. box. Okay, so here we go down here. That's where I came up, right there. Okay. This. Crap, that looks like the, uh, for the turret, maybe. I don't know. No, the, yeah. Anyway, interesting. Th this is obviously different I don't know what that would have been there for. Oh, maybe the radar thing popped out or something like that. Anyway, little boxes and things, just like I said, I haven't been in here. So, you guys probably know more about this than I do. Um, little wooden side things here. Ammo boxes, original freaking wooden ammo boxes. Pretty cool. Ammunition, oh, would have been 50 caliber. Another wind up here. Obviously, probably go clips up here somehow. Somehow, anyway. So that's that. Ooh! I wonder how that little thing pops forward there. Pops forward somehow. see this right here. I just don't see. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see. I won't break anything. Anyway, that's obviously that little handle right there. That's what pops that little thing out. That's that. Storage, you know, you want to bring your luggage in for a long trip. Oxygen. Bomb hoist stowage. Oh, for like lifting the bombs up in the bomb bay. That's pretty cool. It's got all this original stuff in here. Obviously that one goes out that way and they would have, 50 caliber would have sat right there. Obviously they didn't need to be looking that way. They needed to be looking this way. Actually there's a whole lot of frickin' thing out there. Man, you wouldn't want to hit that damn tail. But that was your, basically that was your view. A bunch more Allison engines over there.
I used to have about 90 of them. I think I'm down to about 50. Um, okay, so this was the back where we looked up. That is there. Ammo, look at the ammo shoots. Freaking still all here. This goes back to the to the tail turret. Okay. Tail turret power junction box. That's for a heater, heated suit. So if you get like really get uh, you know cold here in Florida, you know, you can plug your suit in, you know, and turn that puppy up to high. I'm gonna leave it off for now. Um, that was I think for a trailing antenna, I think they would drop out there. Um, that doesn't look like it would be very useful for a toilet. Um, rather uncomfortable. Fire axe. Uh, a hydraulic tank for something. A little accumulator here. There'd be a little diaphragm in there and there'd be pressure on each side and it would act as like a little hydraulic dampener. Look at that. All these little cool little things original little pieces and stuff. Um, okay, so let's see if we can get back here without busting our butts. Okay, oh, there's the potty. Oh, it's a, you actually have to, uh, like, I don't think anybody's used it in a while. But so you have to dump it. We have a, we have a, uh, a little sign on the Ford Trimotor. There's a little toilet in the back there and it says, Please do not use the toilet over populated areas. <laughs> of course, if you're over enemy territory, it's not a problem. Okay, so this is all to basically hide you, keep you from rubbing into the elevator controls and stuff. That's obviously for the elevator. This is a delicate instrument handled with extreme care. Do not drop or jar. That might be some kind of like a gyro or something like that. I don't know what that would be for. I don't know what that would be for. Okay, so let's figure out how we get in the turret here to unlock, pull lever forwards. What lever? What lever? What lever? Okay. If you just want to open it, all you have to do is slide it. That, that was the little deal. Okay, here we go. I believe, like I said, I believe this is an Emerson turret. Okay, is that pretty cool or what? As original as original can get. Just needs a little bit of cleanup. Okay, there's a gun sight. Polish up that glass. Intercom box. Some stuff over here. Of course, there's a like a dummy gun sitting in there, like a really fake gun. Okay. Get another one over here. Look at all this rigmarole. Okay, I'm not gonna get in it, but that's where your feet would go down there. This is probably a little thing. It's probably not moving, but down there, it's probably a dead man switch, which means before you can operate the guns of the turret, which you would operate right here, that would be azimuth up and down. This would be left and right, so you'd run around like this, you know. And uh, but they, all of these turrets have like a dead man switch on them, so it's like you got you got to have that push down with your feet before this will electrically engage. So basically, that's the. That's the turret. You gotta admit this is pretty cool. Would this be a freaking awesome airplane to restore or what? You see where the ammo goes up there. Down the chutes. Anyway, I have to tell you about 
very long time ago, not a long time ago, but I bet 10 years ago somebody offered me a lot of money for this. Nope, not going to sell it.